next uh, will be uh, Professor Kritiya Gopaisan. Uh, Professor Kritiya is currently an expert gastrointestinal medical oncologist at Sirat Hospital. Professor Kritiya graduated from MD Anderson's, one of the reading cancer centers in the world. Professor Kritiya is interested in molecular study of colorectal cancer as well as the non-operative management of, of rectal cancer. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, today uh, is our great honor to have Professor Kitiya talk in the topic of update in non-operative management of rectal cancer. Professor Kitiya, please. Thank you so much, Dr. Atapan, for your kind introduction. And firstly, I would like to thank the uh, scientific committee for inviting me to present today. My topic is the update in non-operative management of locally advanced rectal cancer. Here is my disclosure. For the outline today, firstly, I would like to overview the management of locally advanced rectal cancer and a practical approach to non-surgical management of rectal cancer. And I have one case that I would like to share with you about this technique. For the classic strategy of stage two, stage three rectal cancer, including preoperative concurrent chemo radiation, which consists of the long cause radiation together with chemotherapy, including 5-FU or capsetabine, followed by TME and then adjuvant chemotherapy. In this classic strategy, Around one-fourth of the patient receive pathological complete response with a five-year-old old survival of 75%, with five-year local recurrent rates just only 6%. And from the data, the patient who achieve pathological complete response have a better local recurrence and five-year-old old survival compared with the patients who have no path CR. However, even if the classical strategy demonstrates a favorable oncologic outcome. Surgical resection still associated with significant morbidity and impact quality of life, especially in the patients who have lifelong chlorosomy. So, there is the increasing interest to treatment to de-escalate the surgical treatment in low-risk patients. Non-operative management of rectal cancer or wash and wear technique is an emerging treatment approach to aim to carefully selected patients to avoid the morbidity of radical surgery, but still retain the same benefit of excellent tumor control of the surgical resection. The wash and wear strategy was originally proposed by Dr. Ham Gamer and Girl Group in 2004. In that retrospective study, they include the patient who have resectable rectal adenocarcinoma with neoadjuvant concurrent chemo radiations. In the patients who achieve complete clinical response, they render the patient to wash and wear technique. In the patient who have no clinical complete response, they do the classical surgery. For the clinical complete response, they define as a normal digital rectal examination no residual ulcer on proctoscopy and negative tissue biopsy, and no evidence of distant metastasis. The result of that study demonstrate that the overall survival in the patient who do the wash and wet technique is not difficult difference uh, between the uh, wash and wet and the patient who achieve pathological complete response if resection performed. And after the, that years, the multiple study uh, confirmed the favorable outcome of watch and wind with no significant in terms of overall survival and local recurrence rate. However, in this technique, there are several open questions about this strategy, including what kind of patients should we do in this approach? The clinical and radiologic criteria to determine clinical complete response. So, and the duration of neoadjuvant treatment should be only classical treatment or should be add one, some more strategy. And the role of the dose intensification, including chemotherapy or radiation. 
And finally, of course, we didn't do the surgery, so we need the optimal follow-up protocol to detect early detected tumor recurrence. If we focus on the patient selection, of course, the standard technique is surgery. We don't agree about that. But in the patients who need lifelong colostomy, which is the patient who might be fit for the wash and wet technique. So in the patient selection with this technique, we prefer to do the wash and wet in the patient who have the tumor located at the midden rectum or distal rectum. Or the patient have multiple comorbidities or not considered as a good candidate for surgery. After the concurrent chemo radiations, they are concerning about the timing of assessment. Here, uh, the table here is the time between completion of neoadjuvant treatment and the first assessment. This study demonstrates that the timing of assessment after concurrent chemo radiation length from 4 to 20 weeks. But in our practice, the optimal time to assess clinical complete response uh, remain undefined, but normally we use uh, six to eight weeks after completion of treatment. We have some more data that extending of the interval between complete concurrent chemo radiation and surgery increase tumor regression and maybe improve pathological complete response. However, we should not wait too long because if we initially assessment the tumor after eight weeks, we might to carefully about some of the patient might poor respond to the concurrent chemo radiation, and we don't want to avoid the relay surgery in the patient who might not respond to the treatment. Let's move to the treatment duration and uh, intensifications. For the classic strategy of long cause concurrent chemo radiation followed by TME, the PAT CR rate was around 10 to 15 percent. But at the present day, we have new strategy to treatment in the locally advanced rectal cancer, which we may include the chemotherapy that we normally start after the surgery. We move it into the before surgery. Either you can use induction chemotherapy followed by concurrent chemo radiation and then surgery. Or you can use the con uh, concurrent chemo radiation followed by chemotherapy and then surgery. So in this approach, we call total neoadjuvant approach, which means give everything before you do the surgery. The advantage of the chemotherapy in TNT strategy, you can might easier to to increase the compliance of the patient treatment. Because if you look back to the data, when medical oncologists start the chemotherapy, you just only 15%, 50, not 15, 50% 15 per, 50 of the patient can complete, complete six months of the treatment. The total neoadjuvant approach can be move the chemotherapy first, so they increase less of the compliance. And moreover, the chemotherapy that we use uh, before the surgery is make the benefit that we can treat mycometastasis in the patient who might have highly chance to systemic spreading. And finally, this approach, we have the data that increased chemotherapy before surgery, uh, most of the patient have the reduction in the tumor state and increase the PET CR. And if the patient have that more, more chance to increase PASA. This is the right way that we need because more and more patients that adopt the TNT strategy will be suitable for wash and wear technique which we we'll focus today. We have the recent study from Dr. Grassi Aja that we are adding the feasible of the adding modified for FOX6 in between after surgery before and before surgery. If you look to, the, to that data, you will see that the past CR was over 18% in classical conventional CCRT followed by TME. But the past CR increased to 38% in the patient who received six cycles of 4 Fox regimen before surgery. 
which means with, with, when we apply the multiple cycle of chemotherapy, they have highly chance to get the pathological complete response, with the data demonstrate to uh, 38%. Not only the phase two data from Dr. Ajar, last year we have the meta-analysis that demonstrate that total neuroadjuvant therapy when compared with standard therapy, the pathological complete response will be dropped from 15% to 30%. And total neuroadjuvant approach for now, we have the prospective randomized phase three data that confirm this result. Firstly, the Labido study, which included locally advanced rectal cancer to receive, to randomize to receive the five by five, followed by KPOC for six cycle and then TME. They compare with the patient with standard concurrent long cause concurrent chemo radiation, followed by TM TME. Another prospective study, a uh, Prodigy 22 study, which include the neoadjuvant chemotherapy, which they use the modified for foxylic for six cycle, which means three months, followed by standard long course of concurrent chemo radiation, and then adjuvant chemotherapy for the total of six months. They compare with the standard long course concurrent chemo radiation, followed by TME, and then adjuvant chemotherapy, which we consider as a standard of care. From that, rectal, from that prospective randomized study, they demonstrate and uh, confirm the pathological complete response with achieve around 30% in this approach, which if we would like to, to consider watch and wait, this TNT approach would, should be considered compared with the standard classical strategy. When we move to the criteria of the determined clinical complete response, which is the most important when we, when we see the patients. Because if, we, if the patient cannot achieve clinical complete response, in this case, we should send the patient to do the surgery. But in the patient who have the complete response, there are proposed clinical complete response criteria by multiple study here. But when we simplify the criteria, we can do, the criteria should be the patients have no mass, no mucosal irregularity or ulceration on digital rectal examinations and endoscopic examination. And we need to do the biopsy to confirm that no malaxy was found in the tissue. And imaging study uh, show no distant metastasis and no tumor located at the rectum. This is a simplified criteria to evaluate the clinical complete response. Because of two data, we have multiple molecular biomarkers in the stage four disease. Multiple attempts try to use the biomarker to predict the response of concurrent chemo radiations. They use the gene, multiple gene mutations. They use the circulating free DNA or circulating tumor cell. But for now, there are no, there is insufficient data for clinical use. But in the near future, we will see the data that will be the potential biomarker to the best selection the of the patient who might be fit with this approach, which is the circling tumor cell. A theory, they will test the circling tumor cell before concurrent chemo radiation. And after completion of treatment, they will test the circulating tumor cell again. If we cannot detect circulating tumor cell and the clinical fit in the criteria of complete clinical response, this case is a perfect case to do the wash and wear technique. We are waiting for more data that this biomarker will be helped us to the best selection of the patient in the near future. So let's move to the follow-up protocol because we move to the, we, we, we talk about the which kind of patient that might fit for the treatment with strategy that we would prefer, which we prefer the total neuroadjuvant approach. We have to initial assessment of the tumor response not longer than eight weeks to detect the patients who might not be respond to the concurrent chemo radiations. 
and we have to follow up after treatment and do whether the patients uh, achieve the clinical complete response. But in that case, the follow-up protocol is the most important part at, as well because the surgeon didn't take it off. So we need to close follow-up this kind of patient to detect the local recurrence. For now, the surveillance protocol uh, for this uh, technique are not consensus exits of frequency and duration of the, uh, the, the, the surveillance. However, if you look back to the data from the previous study, more than 80% of the local recurrence diagnosed within first two years. So, in general, the surveillance duration in the we treat uh, intensive surveillance uh, during the first two years and longer follow-up interval after that. Which means two year for the first two years is very important. We have to to regular follow-up more frequently to detect the local recurrence. And here is the proposed schedule of follow-up uh, in the patient who achieve clinical CR and do wash and wet technique. In the first year, they recommend to do the CEA, digital rectal examinations, endoscopy every three months. They recommend to, they propose, not recommend, they propose MRI of pelvis to detect local decurrence every three months, CT scan of the chest and abdomen every six months. For the second to third years, they recommend CA every three months, DRE, endoscopy, and MRI of the pelvis every six months, and CT chest and abdomen every, every year. And after that, it's along, uh, the follow-up can be due every six months to a year. But I think in, in, our, in, in, my, in my opinion, or in some, after I, I discussed with some of the surgeons, I think the first year, first one and two year is quite similar for the follow-up because we know that 80% of the tumor comes up in the first two years. So it makes sense to follow up CA, DRE, endoscopy every three months in the first years. MRI pelvis can be done by three to six months in the first year at the same as CT chest and abdomen. For the year two, uh, digital rectal examination can be done between three to six months. Endoscopy and the imaging can be done uh, every six months. For the year three to five, we can do uh, every six months of the CADRE endoscopy, MRI pelvis, and yearly for the CT chest and abdomen. This is the proposed uh, schedule follow-up in patient in, in this institute. And if we follow up the patients and we see that the tumor locally glowed, everyone would need to know that the outcome of the tumor, is it good or is it bad compared with the, if we do the surgery at, at, at the first time. We have some data that uh, the entire luminal recurrence that I told you earlier with, with, uh, with uh, 15 to 30 percent and the first two years is allowed 80%. However, the data from previous study demonstrate that if you develop the tumor recurrence in the first two years, you quite manage men by most of the patients can manage by sawa surgery. And the rate of unsalvageable local recurrence just only 1%, which means if we have a regular follow-up, we can detect the tumor recurrence really early and the salvage treatment can be done very easy. For the distant metastasis of non-surgical management, it's around 8 to 10%. Uh, table here is the data from previous study that show the tumor growth was around 30%. Salvage surgery can be done 80 to 90% from the surgeon. And the survival rate pretty much uh, quite be good because the uh, so five year and three years survival achieve 80 to 90%, which means after follow up, if we can detect the, the tumor record, we can do the salvage treatment. It might not impact the patient's outcome. So this is all the, the, the update data that I'd like to tell you in each step when we decide to, to pick the, page, the right patients to 
do with uh, during the, the the treatment and the follow up treatment. This is a practical approach. So this is a practical approach to non-surgical management rectal cancer. If you see the patients locally advanced rectal cancer patient, we try to put that patient due to MDT teams. We will pre-staging MRI, CT scan, proctoscopy. We will do neoadjuvant approach, which we prefer the total neoadjuvant technique. After that, we have to re-assessment the tumor. And if the patient uh, achieve clinical complete response, we can do the surgery with each uh, standard technique, or we can discard for non-surgical non management. This is a slide that uh, we have the data. There's a slide from the previous that they, they recommend the patient factor to consider non-operative management of rectal cancer. They put the patient that have the advanced age or unable to tolerate surgery and or the patient don't want to have the lifelong colostomy. And the tumor location should be the mid or low lying rectal cancer. And clinical complete response after surgery. This is the, the, the perfect case, or this is the candidate case, not perfect case, to do wash and wet technique. And so far, the guideline endorsed wash and wet technique can be considered as a one of standard of care. And of course, we need the prospective study because all of the studies that we discuss are retrospective in nature. They have some limitation to to, to demonstrate uh, some of the, the, the factor. We need more prospective study to confirm the result. I will, will finish my talk here and will, I will do the case study I, that I would like to show you about this approach. Here is the 83 years old male who have the multiple underlying disease of the dyslipidemia and type 2 DM and NAD. He presented with mucous body stool for three months. Digital rectal examination demonstrated a mass five centimeter from anal watch. Colonoscopy was done and found hemicircumferential mass at five centimeter from anal watch. The rectal biopsy demonstrated the moderately differentiated adenocarcinoma. MRI lower abdomen demonstrate that the patient have the rectal wall thickening with, uh, at the mid-rectum. The, uh, the tumor with extramural spreading and fill perirectal and presarcal lymphadenopathy. From the MRI scan, they classify the patient have the rectal cancer, clinical T3 and N2 disease. Distant metastasis was done and found no distant metastasis. In this case, the patient have eco performance status one, normalized CEA. We put the patients into the, the MDT treatment. Whether we will use the classical strategy, which everyone know that include long cost concurrent chemoration, followed by GME and then adjuvant after that, or we have another option including long cause versus short cause radiation, with that, which is the topic that I, I didn't men mention. Or we will use the neoadjuvant chemotherapy, which is a part of total neoadjuvant treatment. So far, this is the treatment option in, in that meeting. For the total neoadjuvant approach, we use the, the Rapido study, which includes five by five, followed by KPOC for six cycle and then TME in these patients. We start the radiation and conservative chemotherapy until six cycle without delay of the treatment. This, the treatment was complete at uh, November 2021, last year. So in this case, we move to the, the assessment. MRI whole abdomen demonstrate that there is a markedly tumor shrinkage at the rectal and compatible with the tumor regression grade one. CT chest, not, uh, did, uh, no distant metastasis was identified by imaging. 
we sent the patient to evaluate the colonoscopy and show that no tumor was found on the colonoscopy and biopsy show no malignancy with norm still normalized CEA. So in this case, we define the patient that have the achieved the clinical complete response. So I will, would ask you, the surgeon in this room, what would you prefer? You prefer to do the GME or you prefer to do the wash and wear technique? Anyone? <laughs> it's I your think, turn, yeah. Dr. Atapon. Uh, nowadays, I think it uh, depends on the patient. We need to discuss with them and uh, give them the, uh, the data that uh, we, are, uh, we have now uh, and then let, let them decide by, by themselves. We did not decide by ourselves mm -hmm. because uh, uh, both sides have a pro and con both sides. Therefore, now I think uh, same as a surgeon in this room, we, we let the patient decide what is the best treatment for them. Okay. This is what we done in the, the, the meeting with the patients after we, we get all the, the data. In this case, we discuss with the patient that we can do the operation or we have one more option that might be fit for you. If you go back to the, the table that I present earlier, in this case, the kid's case, he 83 years old, is quite old. The patients, uh, when we discuss, they don't want to have the lifelong colostomy. The location of tumor, tumor located at the mid rectum that we, he need a lifelong colostomy, and he fit with the uh, clinical complete response. That is why the patient chose the watch and wear technique. And after that, we follow up him every three months with CEA. And so far, he still have the normalized CEA. Colonoscopy and sigmoidoscopy uh, were done every three months and still show no, no tumor recurrence. Uh -huh. CT chest and abdomen done six months after the completion of the treatment show no evidence of the disease. So far, the patient still okay and happily with they can pass through by himself, no need to use the ostomy. So in my conclusion, neoadjuvant concurrent chemo radiation followed by surgery still remain the standard of care in rectal cancer who are suitable for a surgical candidate. The rectal cancer patient with complete clinical response after neoadjuvant concurrent chemo radiation have derived less benefit for radical surgery and non-operative management or wash and wet can be considered. However, the surveillance protocol is the key for early detection of the tumor. We have to do like a regular follow-up with him to detect the tumor recurrence. And so far, we need uh, the data from prospective study to confirm the non-inferiority of this approach. So far, the surgery still with the standard of care, not wash and wet anyway. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Kitiya. Any question from the floor? Uh, I have one question uh, for the re-evaluation. Is it a PET scan at the benefit for the re-evaluation? Actually, they propose about PET scan that you can, done, you can do with PET scan, but no need, uh, no, no need in every case because PET scan cannot be done in every hospital. So if we can use only the standard technique, including the CT scan and MRI, App, uh, pelvis is enough to detect. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Masuda, can I ask your opinion? For, for the uh, re-evaluation after CCRT in the Japan, do, do you perform the, the PET scan or of the case? Uh, uh, PET scan? PET scan for re-evaluation. Yeah, yeah, we use uh, PET scan, but um, PET scan is very expensive, expensive um, examination, so we cannot do every month or every three months. We can do that only once or twice per year, so it's not uh, realistic. And I have one question. Yes. And uh, what channel weight strategy is a very good, uh, wonderful strategy, but uh, how do you think about the TN, uh, what channel weight strategy for the patient with uh, 
like such as a T2 N0. T2 N0. And uh, okay. the patient really wants to preserve their anus. Okay. Actually, for the T2, it, so we prefer to do the total inoagulant approach, but we prefer to do just only the locally advanced that need to do the, the rate chemotherapy. So in that case, it's not fit for the total inoagulant approach. And we think it's too much to start the chemotherapy, which we consider use the combination treatment. So in that case, we, uh, I think the surgeon has to talk to the patient. We will go with the standard long course. If do, the patient do not want to do the surgery because just only stage one disease, you can do by your own. You can took it off and then you can follow up like T2 and zero. But in this case, if we, the patient don't, don't need to do the surgery, we can offer the standard long cause concurrent chemo radiations and then follow up after that to, to look for the tumor, tumor response. Yeah, thank you. Because uh, in Japan, Japan clinical oncology group, J Kogu, it's called J Kogu, um, is make, um, making a protocol for the such a protocol. Okay. Wait, uh, what's the wait for the T2 and zero? And so, but some surgeons disagree with their, their um, proposal. So okay. it's a very, uh, yeah, may, maybe this topic need to be discussed more, more in the future. Yes. And I think it's still be a case by case when we discuss the patient with the patient too, because we have no prospective data to, to evaluate which kind of technique is better than the others. Thank you. Yeah. Because uh, we will run off, out of okay. time. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Kitiya, for your excellent talk. And now we have, uh, we're going to have a group photo uh, in front of uh, the, the site tech. And after that, we take a short break and return to the room for, for the next topic. Thank you very much for your, for your high uh, attention.